Today I want to talk about the Boker Club Knife, which is an exclusive from um, SMKW Knives. Uh, this, I guess, you could call an SFO, Special Factory Order, uh, from SMKW. Is that what I said? SMKW Knives, Smoky Mountain Knife Works. Um, there, uh, a, a fellow on YouTube, Bakery Wizard, I think is his channel name, uh, actually sh just recently posted a video on this and, and uh, inspired me to uh, take a look at it, especially given the price. Um, Smoky Mountain Knife Works, I think originally had this thing at like 150 or something like that, and then um, knocked it down to like, I forget what it was maybe a hundred. And then after that deal, it, it dropped even further to like 79, 15 or something like that. And uh, somewhere or another, I found, um, I got uh, another 10% off on it. So anyway, it, 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 was a, it was a smoking deal. It was my, it's my first boker. This boker is made in Solingen, Germany. Uh, and apparently those are the best of the best when it comes to boker. Uh, but I, I don't know, there's something about this that I really liked. And also, I have a number of, of knives that I, I have, I would like to make videos on. But I jumped on this one because as soon as I got it, I saw, um, well, first of all, it's gorgeous. I mean, the copper bolsters, I don't have a, a, a knife that has copper bolsters uh, or copper hardware. I mean, as you can see here, the liners, I'm not sure if this is integral. I think that the liners and the bolsters are integral. I, I, I might be wrong. It, they might have polished that down really well, but I'm not seeing any gap between the liners, which are copper, and the bolsters, which are copper. I'm inclined to think it's integral. I think I heard that they, uh, Boker put together a Barlow. I, 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 I'm not sure if that's an SMKW exclusive or not, but it's a similar type knife where it's got uh, burlap micarta covers and um, a nice big copper bolster. And I hear that that's integral. So it makes me think that this could be integral as well. So, um, but I'll get into that. But uh, I, I just really like the look of it. But anyway, the, I wanted to jump on this now because it's, the, I wanna see, I'm very interested to see how this knife will age or how it will patina. The day that I got it, I got it a few days ago and um, the copper is still shiny. But if you get close to it, you can see, I mean, it, the thing is already starting to patina, which makes sense. I mean, this knife is meant to patina. It's meant to just age, and, and I think it's going to get nicer and nicer as it ages. But I kind of just wanted to show it, uh, you know, before it was aged and uh, before that patina really took hold, if, if nothing else, just to kind of remember what the thing used to look like. Granted, I could always polish it. I probably won't. I, I love how, uh, I mean, this thing is just meant to patina. Anyway, uh so uh, a couple things to say, I guess. It's the, the transition on, uh, transitions on this thing are amazing. I mean, they're, they're, they're very good. The, the back spring and the liners, um, just zero gaps. If I can do this thing correctly. There we go. Um, zero gaps. It's very, very well executed. As I, if you close your eyes and kind of just rub your fingers around where the transitions would be from cover to bolster, from bolster to liner, from um, liner to backspring, I mean, they're just not there. Uh, it's, it's very, very, very well done. Also, the pins, even, I think the pins are copper. The, there's just, all the pins are flush to the cover. As I said, this is burlap micarta. Uh, it's very well done. I also, I, I think they call this a hidden tang um, where... You know, as a clip point, I'm sorry, as a clip point, as a spear point, um, this, it, 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 from the tang to the point, it gets a little bit fatter, which I guess is to be expected. I like that to, for its pinchability, so you can pinch this thing open. You don't have to use the long pole, even though the long pole is gorgeous. But anyway, it, I, I have a, I have a few other knives like this. This is similar to the GEC 35 pattern. I have a GEC 35 where, uh, that the, the, the tang is more exposed out of the knife. Not that that's a bad thing, 
But I was intrigued by that. I, I, it seems like they did this on purpose, where they ground it down just as like a, an extra touch. So it's a hidden tang there. I think that's kind of cool. You know, even with GECs, this tang can be a sharp 90 degree edge as it's closed, right? And that can be, some people I guess are, are bothered by that. I mean, I, I'm not necessarily bothered by it when, when there's a 90 degree edge there, uh, when the tang is sticking out. But I thought it was kind of cool nonetheless. I mean, it just, to me, it's just like an extra level of finishing, which I think is kind of nice. I mean, I don't, to my knowledge, GEC does not do that. I've not seen, or, or at least they won't, they, they don't go out of their way. Some of their patterns, I'm trying to think of one, but some pattern, the design of the knife itself, the chassis that it's built on might cover the tang. But it, to my knowledge, it seems, as I said, that this, they actually went out of their way to hide the tang. Um, Another video I'll do is I'll, I'll put this is as I said is a similar uh, pattern to the GEC thirty five. I will make a comparison video between this and the GEC thirty five that I have to show um, kind of the difference and especially how that tang hangs out. Uh, but nonetheless, it's very nice, very nice. Uh, here is the blade, so spear point, as I said, not good point. It's an O one tool steel. Boker, Solingen, Germany, with the little Boko, Boker logo there. This is acid, acid washed, this O1 tool steel. Uh, when I found out about that, and oh, actually, I almost didn't get the knife because of that. I think, um, I don't know what his name is, but uh, Baker Wizard, uh, I, I kind of like his channel. Um, he talks about it, and he, I think he says that on the website, there's no, the, it's true, the, uh, SMKW website does this knife no favors, I think is what he said. And I would agree. I think it just, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. It, it almost looks like computer images of the knife itself. Or, or in the very least, it's like an artificial photograph. I don't know how to also describe it. It doesn't look like somebody just took a picture of it and just blurred out the, the background. It looks like something else. Um, I hope this will do it a little bit, I mean, more justice here. It's, it's a gorgeous blade itself the profile is very nice the acid wash is nice i'm a patina guy i would like to have that thing just come satin and i'll patina it i don't need them to to do it for me uh that said though it's well done i don't really have a problem with it i mean i, I was uh, i was considering um kind of satining this thing myself getting rid of this acid wash just to watch the blade age as i use it you know as i cut meat or fruit or whatever I watch this thing just turn into a rainbow and then darken up over time um i i don't know if i'm going to do that uh as it is by the way forgive there i have been using this thing so there might be some scuffs or uh fingerprints or whatever but as i said i mean look at that back spring. i mean it's very it's well done hopefully you can see the transitions are just nice i mean this knife has got it going on especially for the price is it a gec i would say no is it very close i would say yes i mean it's just it's definitely not coming out of gec's factory i'm not saying that that's a bad thing but you could just tell that it's just different i'm not even saying as a result of it com not coming out of the factory of gec that it's lesser quality i'm just saying you can just tell that different people made this knife uh the blade well by the way i'm trying to show you the blade well it's nice and clean or at least it was uh, before i got it um nice and thin this the, the profile is not very thin it's just it's well done uh, it's well done i like the match striker pull there i think that's very well done if you really get in there you can see i mean the machining of, of that is pretty good the swedge is decent what i'll say i'll let you hear the walk and talk a couple things uh i'll show you centering so the centering of the of the of the blade is nice, but if you can see it, I'm trying to get in there. The the swedge is cut maybe imperfectly. I'm assuming it's drawn by hand. Uh, I have a I have a bit of GECs, so I will compare them to a GEC. I would say the swedge is better significantly on a GEC. The point. Where is this thing? The point. Uh, 
maybe might be a little bit more refined coming to a zero point on a GEC. I'm not, I'm not trying to complain. I'm just showing it off. Um, uh, I will say the knife came uh, very sharp out of the box. Uh, it's very sharp. I, I, it's interesting when people say it, it's serviceable. The edge is serviceable. I don't think, I think that the edge is more, I'm not saying people said that about this knife, um, but it's just interesting when, as people use that word for out of the box sharpness, I'm not sure what that means. I think what it means is that, is it, it's, it's, there are knives you receive where you can, you can get them out of the box and they're workable and a, a, sim, a few stripes, uh, a few swipes on a strop will get it, uh, the edge very keen and, and uh, shaving sharp. Uh, this knife came shaving sharp out of the box. If, if I, if I, uh, slid it down my strop a few times with some compound on it, this thing would be a razor. Um, so in, in a sense that's serviceable to me is where the grind itself comes well done enough where you can either hone it with a rod or you can strop it with leather with compound, especially with compound. Compound will get this thing zipping. Um, but you know, for my purposes, it's very good as it is um I'm trying to show you the, the the grind marks there the plunge grind and all that uh is well done i i would say is it is it as good as a gec i don't think so um again i'm not complaining i'm not trying to complain i'm just trying to show i uh it's 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 not it's not as good as a gc there's the tang it's it's good though. It's very thin behind the edge. I'll say that. It's very thin. It seems very consistent. If you look at the plunge on both sides, it seems consistent. It might not be as refined. It's not as a GEC, but that's okay. Again, not complaining, just just comparing. It will be interesting to see this next to a GEC 35, which I have. Um, uh, and that'll be that'll be interesting. But anyway, I'm uh, for for what it is, it's great. I mean, that's what I'm trying to say here. If you haven't picked up on it, I do like the knife. Um, there are some things uh, uh, going back to GEC. There are some things that might even be better than GEC, for, uh, or better, or, or just different. I'll say. First of all, right now, the transitions between cover to bolster are better than GEC. They 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 just are better. I'll say this. Can GEC do this? Yes. Have I, have I, ha do I have knives that have this kind of, uh, transition finishing? Absolutely. Uh, and maybe it's not fair to say that Boker does it better because I have a sample size of one here. This is my only Boker from Solingen, Germany. So I know that these are their higher end knives. Are all of their pieces from Solingen coming out like that? I'm inclined to say maybe. It's, it seems that the, the Barlow had very nice transitions as well. And I've seen other reviews like the Cattle Knife, that thing, the transitions. They, I mean, it's a hefty price tag, I guess, because of the, um, the tariff. But the, um, the transitions are nice. Is this knife worth $200, $250, or whatever the original price was? I mean, uh, if anything, the market for pocket knives over the last decade have told us that what your conception of value is value is in the eye of the beholder i'm not going to say it's it's meaningless because it's certainly not but value is what somebody is willing to pay for the knife you know some people might look at this knife and say you got to be out of your mind to pay 250 for it although people are spending 800 dollars on gecs so uh are gecs worth 800 dollars uh, some people would say, no, absolutely not. Right. And I think when they say that, they say, I would never pay $800 for a GC. So I don't blame you. I would say, I agree, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they're not worth it. They're not worth it to you uh, or to me, or, or I'm not saying they're not worth it to me or to you. I'm just saying hypothetically. Uh, but, but you know, it, the, the mar markets are just interesting that way. Uh, I, I think it it, it kind of stinks that that that's the the state of affairs now with the market, especially with GEC, um, where they're so difficult to get. Or when you get them, you know, it's like, do you can you even use the thing? Because it's it's like you're 
it's like you're using a, a five hundred dollar knife at that point, you know. Uh, so in one sense, that's that's kind of annoying, but in the other sense, it's it's interesting to watch. I mean, the market to just kind of hold your feelings at bay and to allow the market to speak for itself is kind of an interesting thing to witness. Um, people have all kinds of opinions about that, about Bill Howard, you know, why does he do such limited runs? Is he trying to hurt our feelings? Uh, that's a topic for another video, I guess. But the, the, the point is, is it's just interesting to see the market of pocket knives. And, and so in this case with Boker, yeah, it's, you know, it might be 250 bucks MSRP on a website. You got to realize that a lot of that has to do in the States with this tariff, apparently, that the U.S. is imposing on Germany. In Germany or in Europe, these knives would not be that expensive. But that said, it seems there is a market in the U.S. for these Boker, for these Solinger-made knives. So to some extent, maybe they're worth it to, to some people. I jumped on this one, as I said at the beginning, because I appreciated Bakery Wizard's uh, kind of heads up um, to, to, as he suggested that, hey, you might want to consider this knife for the quality and for the price that you can get this on SMKW, it's worth checking out. And for me, that was enough because I don't have any copper bolstered knives. I don't have any copper liner knives. I don't have any Boker Solingen knives. Uh, I don't really even have any, many O1 tool steel knives. Now, GEC used to do uh, their farm and field, I know, in O1 tool steel. They don't do that anymore, which is kind of a drag. Um, I have not used this enough to comment on the heat treat of the O1. I, I suspect that it's going to be excellent. Um, I do love O1. I mean, I have some uh, some fixed blades in O1. I love how O1 takes a patina. I love how you how O1 will hold its edge. Definitely better than 1095. And also, you can get that thing sharp. Not that you can't get 1095 sharp, but the, it's um. It can just take a keen edge, and I think that it does hold the keen, keen razor edge a little bit longer than 1095. I'm not complaining about 1095, it just is what it is. Also, I'll say 01 definitely has a tendency to rust less than 1095, which is kind of a drag, again, why they did this acid wash to me. It's not a drag. I mean, it is what it is. I just, um, I wanted to do it myself, you know. I'll acid wash my blade by using it and having my wear go on it. I think that's part of the charm of traditional slip joint pocket knives. But uh, I'm not really complaining though, it's, it's cool. The uh, walk and talk is nice. It's a very light pull. I would say a five is light. One thing that I don't love, I like that, that the, 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 um, as it goes to half stop, it's actually getting better. When it got, when it came to me, this to half stop, it would not, it wouldn't go. All right. I'm trying to, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to exaggerate it now. It wouldn't go. Um, it's going now. So I was, what I would say to that is, uh, at first I didn't like it. I realized though, I could clean that out. It's a little gritty. I don't know what kind of oil they're using in there. I could just put some mineral oil in it after I clean it. And with some fresh oil, I think it'll snap because it's already starting to snap. So that's it. Uh, I'll make another video about this knife eventually. I, I do want to show how it patinas, but now I'm not going to be scared to really use this thing and put it in my pocket and just let it be. Uh, now that I've recorded a video on it to show kind of what it looks like um, as I got it. So I hope, oh, I'll just show you this real fast. This is the uh, case that it came in. Nice. Um... It also, there's a box that it came with as well, which I don't have on me right now, but this is kind of the thing to show. The box is fine. This is fine too, actually. I do, I kind of dig it because I, I don't have a case like this and you can throw a couple knives in here and travel around with that. Just some paperwork in here, nothing big. There's a quality control issue or um, thing. There's a certificate with the 01, blah, blah, blah. It's pretty nice. Um, it's nice. This is probably faux wool, maybe. I don't think it's real wool. Very nice. So that's it. Uh, interested to hear what people think about this knife. I can see people liking it. I can see people not liking it, but that's the beauty of uh, pocket knives. Um, 
I, I'll say too, I like the size of this thing. I'm not I'm not a spec kind of a guy. Maybe in the future I'll I'll measure this out and tell you. I mean the specs are on the internet. You can just check it out. It's uh to my knowledge, it's what I love, my sweet spot is three and three three and three quarters closed. This thing is three and three quarters closed. That's my jam. I like three and a half, four inches is fine, a little bit big though. Uh three and three quarters is my is my jam. Uh the blade, you know, is under three inches which is fine for a, for a pocket knife. But with three and three quarters inches, what I find with my hand is that I just get the purchase on it. There's that word purchase that I need or that I like, not that I need. I mean, I'm not, I'm not carving trees with this thing, but what it, what I liken it to is each bolster, or if, you know, if there's no bottom cat bolster, each end of the knife hits my, uh, these bones here and it just works. I use most of my knives in side holding, right? Light duty tasks, and it just fits. Smaller, like a GEC 15, it's three and a half inches, the TC Barlow, for instance, it's fine, great knife. Smaller though, it's as small as really I like to go. This um, three and three quarters is very nice. Single blades, it's nice and thin, very, very thin profile, perfect. Very nice, the, the micarta is beautiful, I'll say. It's gorgeous. The pins are excellent. The, line, the fluting on the bolster is very nice. The centering is excellent, I'd say. The centering is, is almost perfect. It's really the, 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 um, the swedge itself that kind of throws you off and the point. But I think the centering is very good. So that's it. Cool knife. Let me know what you think. Thanks.